Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are. May the good Lord bless you, guide you, and protect you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, our topic is invite God into your difficulties. Invite God into your difficulties. Amen. Today, inviting God into your difficulties, most of the time you are praying, God, get me out of this challenge. Get me out of this trouble at work. Get me out of this financial setback. There is nothing wrong with that. But before you get out, you have to invite God in. Sometimes the miracle is not in getting out. It's in what God is going to do in this situation. Instead of just praying, God, get me out. Why don't you get start praying, God, come in to this hospital room while I will take the treatment, coming to this trouble at work where the people aren't fair, coming to this anxiety that I'm dealing with. What's more powerful than God bringing you out? It's when God comes in and begins to change things. He comes in and gives you a favor, despite who is trying to push you down. He comes in and gives you strength that you can't explain, grace to at last. If you are only focused on God bringing you out, then you are going to be disappointed because God doesn't do things on our timetable. Sometimes it's taking longer than we thought. But when you ask God to come in, you can be at rest. God, I know you are right here with me. You are ordering my steps and at the right time. You will get me to where I'm supposed to be. You don't have to fight everything live upset can't sleep at night that happens when you are only focused on getting out god is waiting to come in when you ask him you're saying god don't just change the circumstances change me help me to not just go through this situation help me to grow through it help me to learn increase my faith let my character come up higher if God delivers us out of everything instantly, we would never reach our highest potential. God works in the trouble. He works in the uncomfortable situations. And sometimes God is not bringing you out yet because he wants the odds to be against you in a bigger way. So when he brings you out, it will be a great miracle. Now voices will whisper, God doesn't even hear your prayers. That's why nothing changing. The truth is, God is setting you up to show out in your life. When he brings you out, no one will be able to deny that his favor is on you. God said in Isaiah 43, 2, When you go through the waters, I'll be with you. When you go through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. It's interesting that God didn't say, I will keep you out of every fire. You won't have to face any flaws. No, he said, the challenges will come. There will be adversities and things we don't understand. But the whole key to this verse is when he said, I will be with you in the fire, in the flood, in the famine. Are you trying to get out of something that God is going to take you through? Are you fighting the process? It's not fair. God, I can't take it anymore. Everything will change if you will start inviting God into the fire. He's already promised he will be with you. Maybe he's just waiting for your invitation. The right attitude is, God, I know you're going to bring me out. But in the meantime, I'm asking you to come into this challenge in my heart. Come into this loss I'm going through. Come into this depression that's trying to stop me. When you invite God into your difficulty, you will feel him breathing in your direction, empowering you, enabling you, favoring you. Is it a greater testimony that kept you out of the fire or that he came with you in the fire and brought you through it? David said in Psalm 23 verse 4, Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I'll fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. When you know God is with you, when you are invited him into your situation, when you have a smile in the middle of the difficulty, you will have a song of praise in the prison, like Paul and Silas. You won't be complaining about the trouble, worried about when it's going to work out. You will be at peace in the midst of the storm. And the reason David didn't live afraid, even though he went through valleys and all kinds of adversities is, 
He understood this principle to invite God into the trouble. He wasn't just waiting to get out. He knew that God was right there with him. If you are only praying, God set me out. You will be discouraged until it changes. Sometimes he will take you through the fire. The good news is God knows how to make you fireproof. So as you are here listening to me, just do what is right in the presence of God and leave all your case to God Almighty. He will settle it. People don't determine your destiny, no? Bad breaks cannot stop God's plan for your life. Sickness, additions, unfair situations don't have the final say. Now, don't be discouraged because God didn't keep you out of the fire. God doesn't stop every negative situation. He uses adversities to move us into our purpose. We would never know his power if we are never thrown into a fire, so to speak. You wouldn't know he was a healer if you never had all in us. We wouldn't know he could move mountains if we never faced big obstacles. Now, quit complaining about what you are up against. It's not a surprise to God. The enemy may have turned up the fire seven times hotter than normal. They didn't do that without God's permission. God is in control, not just of your life. He's in control of your enemies. Instead of complaining about the fire, start inviting him to the, into the fire. When he is with you, you cannot be defeated. You and God are a majority. He is a supernatural God. He is not limited by the fire, by the flaws, by the famines. What should take you out cannot stop your destiny. Instead of complaining about everything that you don't like, if you will recognize that God allowed the difficulty, I'm not saying that he sent it, but he allowed it because he had a purpose and the purpose is not so you can live miserable worried and afraid his purpose is to show his glory through you it's so other is it's other people can see his people his power and favor on your life without great test you won't have a great testimony without big battles you won't see big victories amen this teenage boy said, We know our God will deliver us. They made this statement of faith. Then they said something even more powerful. But even if he doesn't, we are still not going to bow down. That's the kind of people that gives the enemy a nervous breakdown. When you can say, God, this is what I'm believing for. This is what I'm hoping will happen. But God, if, even if it doesn't work out my way, I'm still going to give you praise. I'm still going to be good to others. I'm still going to show up everything for you. I'm, I'm still going to help people. That attitude gets God's attention. You are saying, God, not my will, but your will be done. But too often we are putting conditions on God and conditions on our prayer. God will be happy if my boss moves to backside of mass. You know, that is not the right thing to pray. Just pray God coming to this situation. Help me to have a good attitude. Help me to do the right thing when the wrong thing is happening. It's very powerful when you can say, God, if my boss never moves, if he's here until I go to heaven, I know you have given me the strength to overcome the power to be happy in the middle of this difficulty and i'm not going to let this person this sickness this injustice steal my joy now you will grow it now you are coming up higher because sometimes god is waiting for us to pass the test before he brings us out the king had the guards tied up in the teenager's hands and filled with coals. They threw them into the furnace. It was so hot that the guards were instantly killed. Look at it. It looked like this was the end of the teenagers, but people don't have the final say. Anybody that tell you he has the final say, he doesn't know where he is. If it's not your time to go, you are not going to. Nothing can snatch you out of God's hands. In a little while, the king came to check on them. He looked through the furnace window, was puzzled. He said, Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 3, 24, 25. Don't we throw three men in bound? I see four men loosed, and who looks like the son of God? God may not keep you out of every fire, but don't worry. He will come into the fire with you. He will help you overcome what looks impossible. 
God came in the fire with you and here you are still going strong. That loved one you lost or that person that walked away broke your heart. Yes, that should have sold your life. But look at you now, still moving forward, doing great things, fulfilling your purpose. How could it be? God came in the fire with you. The book of Samuel said, Psalm 46 verse 1, it says, God is a very present help in times of trouble. We know that God is always with you. But when you are in difficulties and you invite him in, you are going to feel his presence in a greater way. You are going to be more aware that you are not alone. When you get thrown, in, thrown into the fire, so, so to speak, you won't be bitter. You will stay in faith knowing that the fourth man is right there with you. And who is that fourth man? God. God controls the fire. The God who he restores, who pays you back for the injustices right there, watching over you, protecting you, ordering your steps. Moses went through a difficult situation. He didn't know how it was going to work out. I'm sure he was tempted to worry and think about how big his enemies were. But God said to him in Exodus 33:14, Moses, I will go with you. I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Maybe you are facing some challenges. Life hasn't turned out the way you thought. He asked God to keep you out of the fire. But it didn't happen your way. Now you are wondering how you are going to beat the illness. How your family is going to be restored. God is saying to you what he said to Moses. I'm going with you. I have in the palm of my hand. I'm fighting your battles. That obstacle may be too much for you. But it is not too much for our God. Right now he is pushing back forces of darkness. He is keeping the fire from burning you. He is not letting those waters draw you. He's your protector, he's your deliverer, your maker, your healer, your provider. You don't have to do this on your own. You don't have to figure everything out. You are going to know all the details. You have to walk by faith and not by sight, knowing that he is right there with you. And again, when the king had the teenagers' uh, hands and feet tied up, they could have panicked been stressed out but they understood this principle that god doesn't keep us out of every fire but he comes into the fire with us they didn't fall apart they stayed in peace but i can imagine how different this outcome could have been if they would have complained but bitter discouraged maybe we wouldn't be talking about them now you may be in the fire now but this is not the time to complain. It's not the time to just pray. God get me out. More than ever, you need to start saying, Father, thank you that you are in this fire with me. Thank you that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. God, I'm not going to worry. I trust you. I believe what you promised. I thank you very much. May the good Lord bless you and guide you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.